Okay, after that whole book experience, um, the experience of trying resources that were too hard, say the Asimil workbook at the time, the app, I decided why not go back to basics, okay? Uh, it can suck going back to basics, you feel like you failed and you've not studied enough or not well enough and you've gone through this so many times, why would you do it again? Ugh, all the feelings. So yeah, I did decide, okay, I'm going to give it one last try and go back to the complete basics. And I purchased the story learning method course, the Italian beginner course by Olly Richards. I don't know if you're familiar with this method, but it is actually a method where you learn a language through immersing yourself into a story. The idea behind this is that you're acquiring vocabulary and grammar like a child who grows up just being surrounded by this environment. I'd heard of this method before. He's a very well-known polyglot and I, yeah, happened to receive a, I think it was a newsletter or I don't know where I saw it. I had been following this method for a while, but it's, it had always been too expensive for me. I think this is like a premium priced um, language learning method compared to all the other methods that you can get for free or at a very low price. And then I just decided to buy the bullet and purchase it. I did get a very good offer. I actually got a second course for free. So the course was 300 euros and I got another one for free. So basically each course was 150. Um, yes, that was my big purchase in terms of language learning resources. And yeah, the course for me was good. I enjoyed going through it. I am currently on the second course that I bought, which is Intermediate Japanese. Um, basically the setup is as follows. You listen to one chapter of a story. You are then able to read the transcript in either your target language, so in the Italian, or the source language, which is English. Then you get a video on vocabulary, where someone explains vocabulary to you. Next is a grammar explainer video, then a pronunciation explainer video, and then there are some additional resources for you to practice speaking and quizzes, etc. Now, I like to set up. The story was interesting, so it kept me wanting to move forward to know what happened. The one thing I was a bit disappointed by was that the explainer videos were in English. Like, I don't know why it didn't click for me earlier. Like, I really like it when somebody explains the content to me in my target language. I would say there are probably pros and cons for this. As a language teacher, I normally only use the target language. So I was kind of missing that, even though the instructor was fantastic. I love her. So Martina from the story learning course, great, great teacher. Um, she also has a YouTube channel. And yes, I knew a lot of the content. So this was more of a relaxing, uh, watch it next to, you know, doing something else. Ah, I was still focused. I forgot to explain the first video was actually not vocabulary, but cognates. <laughs> cognates, there we go. It was a cognates video, which I thought was quite creative. They basically gave you a whole list of cognates, basically words that are kind of similar to English, um, which made you feel like, or showed you actually, that you already knew so many more words than you thought you did. The cognates video for me was not really necessary because I no French and Portuguese and Spanish, so I, yeah, I still watched it, but wasn't that important. Um, the grammar video for me was the most helpful one, and I did really appreciate the worksheets. The additional worksheets were gold. Um, they were very detailed. There were lots of, lots of, lots of exercises you could do, both for vocabulary and grammar. I really enjoyed that. They kind of added and built onto the topic, so they didn't only test you on vocab that was in the course, but if there was a lot of sports vocabulary, they would give you a full list, full, but a longer list of um, types of sport, for example, and then yeah, make you practice those words in different exercises. I really enjoyed that. I think this is the most valuable part of the course for me, the worksheets, even though they were an additional resource and 
they told you many times you were not forced to do them. It wasn't homework. Um, I personally just like doing them. I would normally do a chapter and then do the resources from the chapter before. It's kind of like a refresher review. So I really like this method. I think it's pricey. I understand there's a company behind it and whole method. Um, so I recommend it as a resource if you can afford it and um, yeah, if you just want a fully structured whole package deal, right? So sort of an online course. Then the next resources I tried were, or one more resource I tried was Speechling. Speechling is an app that I had on previously as well, and it lets you practice your pronunciation. On Speechling, you can record a sentence that is given to you on a flashcard, and then you can send that sentence to a language coach. The language coach will then correct your pronunciation and send it back to you as feedback. Again, this is a paid resource. It is pricey, it's about 20 bucks a month. I got it at a discount. <laughs> yes, you can use it for free as well. Then there's just a very limited amount of sentences that you can send to the speechling language pronunciation coach, which I think is the strongest feature of the app. The app has other features like flashcards that you can practice with that are great, but there are many flashcards, flashcard apps out there, they're for free. So I do like the fact that you can actually practice your pronunciation. And for example, my Italian pronunciation coach, she was excellent in telling me that my intonation was actually quite off. And then I decided to take all the, the questions because apparently this is where I struggle with. I struggle with the right intonation for questions which is funny because I thought I knew how to do it, but fair enough, I'm trying to take a feedback and I'm going through the flashcards of questions and then I send them to her. I'm currently on a three month um, subscription and then I will review whether I use the app enough or not. But so far it's been a really nice experience. And also you can use it for several languages, which is a nice one. I've also used it to just fine tune my French pronunciation. Yes, all right. Last but not least, I told you that I had tried reading a book in Italian and I kind of bummed because I was, yeah, overesting myself again. Well, I found a book. It was given to me by someone who had received it from another person and didn't find use for it. It's called Italian Sh Short Stories for Beginners. And let me just say, it's not for beginners. You have to know Italian before you um, read this book. Um, this is why the title is quite misleading. Probably have to be an upper higher beginner, but other than that, it's been great for me. There are three page, four page, five page stories with new words that are printed in bold. They are then explained to you later and there's comprehension questions. There's a little summary of the story in both Italian and English. And I just like going through those stories. They're short enough interesting and yeah it gives me a really good feeling of accomplishment even though there are many new words I don't know and they're actually using the passato remoto a lot I never thought I would see this tense and I don't think it's a beginner's tense but it's good to just internalize that tense a little bit because it's kind of this tense that you think oh when am I going to use this bookish academic tense mostly in writing right so this is one resource that I now just recently came across and I love it um, it's a nice one to also just pick up in the evening and just go through and read the story. Uh, I reread the story sometimes because, yeah, then I don't have the feeling I have to study so much. It's more for enjoyment. And sometimes I do take the vocabulary down. So I'm just trying to see how I feel because I don't want to overwhelm myself too much of this. All right, this is all. Which resource do you find the most interesting? Do you have another one that you would like to add? Then please let me know in the comments. I'm happy to check it out next year too, as I will continue to focus on my Italian. Please note that this is not all I have done. I have spent three months in Italy this year. I went to a language school. I had a private tutor. These are more, yeah, <laughs> human resources, so to speak, right? I wanted to highlight the digital and, yeah, paper resources um, that I've been using. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a like, subscribe to my channel. I will upload videos.
sometimes when I feel like it and head over to my Instagram if you want to see more language learning advice. I regularly post over there and you can see things like how I spent three months in Italy and I have a little bit of a review over there. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye!